Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. John 10, 10. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Are you living a life full of abundance? Oh, Lordy, Lordy, don't get started on all that new age stuff because people manifest abundance. But this is Jesus promising that he is not the thief, the one who just comes to steal and destroy. Let's look at the world. That's the thief. And slaughter? Hello, steal, slaughter, and destroy. This is the ruler of the world. He is trying to kill us. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh after that, but some people don't see it. The way that the ruler of this world, which is truly the powers and principalities that have taken over the rulers of this world. The people who are at the top echelon of the world, the ones that kind of pull the strings, the puppet masters, if you will, they are not of God. They are slaughtering and destroying all of us. They're killing us and they're stealing from us left and right. Those are the thieves. Those are the people who are possessed by evil spirits. You and I have our consciences rocked because we've been given this beautiful gift of faith and a reaction to that gift. Some people have been given the gift of belief but they don't actually change anything about their life. They just live it the way that they want to live it, according to either their desires or the worldly desires, and believe that God's going to say, come on in. We've heard it too often where God says, I'm sorry, but I don't know who you are. Even though you were preaching in the streets and doing great deeds and sometimes even miracles, I do not know you. But God says, come on, people, work with me. <laughs> I came so that they, meaning you, might have life. And that might word is back in there again. You remember last time, John three sixteen, for whoever believes in me might have life everlasting. I know that's a paraphrase. Actually, I could probably find it right in here, but you get the gist. The Lord gave his only son so that those who believe in him might have eternal life. The might is right here again. I came so that they, you, may have life and have it more abundantly. Abundance. Let's go look up that word. Abundantly. I decided to look up the adverb because this describes how we should be living our life. 
in a sufficient degree, fully, amply, amply, <laughs> amply and plentifully were mixed. Sorry about that. Amply, plentifully, in large measure. Live large, people. The second one is one word, extremely. And number three, in an abundant manner. Amazing. So, are you living your life in an abundant manner? Of course, you can't use the word to describe the word. In an extremely sufficient, full, ample, plentiful, large measure? And if you're not, what's going on? It's because you are allowing yourself to get sucked in to the thievery, the stealing, the destroying, the killing us slowly, because we are believing what the evil one has taught us. And we have programmed ourselves. Yes, that word again. We've programmed ourselves to fall right back into those beliefs. This is why on the journey, we should be thinking of Abram. Today in the readings, this is what came to me. Abram, his name is changed to Abraham. Because of the way that he reacted and followed God, no matter what. We need to be thinking about our new self. I don't know. Maybe it's Kendra Anna or something like that. I don't know. I'm not going to give myself a new name, but I want a new life. I want an abundant life. I want to wake up every day loving life, loving God, loving myself, loving my state in life, which is being a wife and a mother and a person that goes out and speaks about God and how he is changing my life. But that does take some action on my side. This morning, you know, the past couple days, I've been fighting the downs and the dumps, the blahs, the waking up and blah, not wanting to do anything and falling for it. Hello, falling for it. But today, I laid in bed, my husband, I'm not sure if it's lay, lie, lying in bed. I was lying in bed. Maybe that's good. I was lying in bed and my husband gets up and I know, okay, this isn't just him going to the bathroom. This is him getting up, getting up. And I didn't want to get up. I had just rolled over. Actually, I got up at four o'clock and I went to the bathroom and I know that I was in the same spot because I remember cuddling myself up. I was kind of chilly. I'm going through, sorry, men, you don't need to hear this, but I'm going through these hot flashes. And so in the middle of the night, I'll wake up super hot, whipping off all of my covers. Oh, sorry, little Dexter. Come on in, Dex. I'm still watching a dog and he just came in or was whining on the other side of the door, which I'm sure none of you could hear. Okay, but if I go back, sorry about that distraction, and you can see Dexter on my most recent video that I just put up on YouTube. He's a big furry labradoodle, like a big white Q-tip. So cute, so cute. We only had him till tomorrow. Okay, back to me lying in bed, and I got up, and I've been going through these hot flashes, and so I know that I was wrapped up in the covers because... Men, when you go into the hot flash, you actually perspire. You have these little beads of sweat all over your body. And it feels great when you pull the covers off because you're cooling yourself off. But darn it, when you are done with that sweat, now you're cold. So you got to pull the covers back on. And that's where I was. So I guess I had slept from 4 until 5.45. This is when my husband gets up. This is the time that we talked about yesterday. Every single day, we need to do the same thing as far as giving God our time. And the best way to do that, because we're very routine and repetitious, 
is to actually set an alarm or commit ourselves to that day and that time so that we can give God our currency in the morning, first thing, together. But that wasn't what I wanted to do at 545. (laughs) It was still dark and I was like, oh Lord, I don't know. I'm just going to lay here for a minute, which I never advise. Get the heck up. The minute that the alarm goes off, the minute that you wake up, swing your legs out and get off your bum and get up and get out of bed. That's step one. Step one. So with that being said, that was what I did two minutes later. So if you don't think that I preach to myself when I am on these podcasts, you're crazy. I share with you my struggles and my journey. And that's what happened. I stayed there for probably a minute and a half. And I said, okay, that's it. I got to get moving. So I got up and I, you know, went downstairs, took care of the dog, let him out, fed him, and then immediately went into prayer. And I am so grateful that I did because I changed my state of being. I filled myself with the Holy Spirit. I envisioned me like Abram becoming Abraham. And I'm seriously looking at the Lord who says, look, I didn't come here (laughs) to be a thief and steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. So he doesn't want us to be in this life of punishment And, oh, man, I got to live this, you know, straight and narrow life. What a boring life that is. How am I going to live without X, Y, Z that I've had in my life so long, but God tells me it's not right? Well, what happens when we do follow his laws, his ways? We have freedom and empowerment and joy and love. And all of this stronghold is gone. All of it is gone. That is living in abundance and abundantly, fully, extremely happy, joyful, loving. I pray that you are praying, please. Please, please pray every morning before you start your day. Shift that attitude into gratitude and receive beautiful graces from God. Shift your down in the dumps, whatever it is, type of emotion or thought or worry or fear or temptation or anxiety or resentment. Shift it into gratitude and love and joy and really look at your life and live it abundantly because that is what Jesus promised, not to steal and to destroy. What's the other word? I walked away from the Bible here. And to slaughter. Gosh, think about slaughter. The evil one has come to slaughter us and we can live a completely opposite life with Jesus. So let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit into our hearts. Every day we can have a renewed spirit. Fill ourselves with joy and love and peace and gratitude And live that way because that is the reason Jesus came, Lord. Father, please help us help ourselves. Help us cry out to your son and to Mary who sits next to him, the the mediatrix of grace. Help us to ask both of them to pour out grace in our hearts. And that we can walk and be witnesses and glorify Jesus and Mary in our lives. 
help us to live life abundantly. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. I want to share one thing that I'm praying about. And I do some of these things and I get halfway and then I change my mind. So I don't think that this is one of them because I feel that people are really wanting more intimate information from my soul, mind, and body journey. So this goes back to December when I started the three mortifications during the Advent season and then came all the way through January when I did my long prolonged fast, the five days, nine hours without eating, the intermittent fasting, the jumping into keto, the learning everything about keto, which is not easy to do. I realized that the way that I did it a couple of years ago was totally wrong. Now I know why I didn't have the same success and the same kind of feeling in my body that I do today. And also sharing all of the things that I've learned about the body and the mind. So from realizing that my hips and my knees and my ankles and the neck pain, you guys all remember my neck pain. I couldn't even move. I was going to a chiropractor. When I look at all of that and how it has changed immensely, I want to actually guide you through some of the exercises, guide you through some of the information and the way that we can connect our mind and our bodies. It's going to be a lot more in depth. I'm going to still have my regular YouTube channel, but I'm going to create a membership channel. And this is going to be where the details come. So if you guys have ever really wanted to have like a a one-on-one coaching relationship, but you couldn't afford maybe the one-hour sessions once a week or however many you want, that's typically what happens is it's a one-hour session each week. And you just, you know, want to stream it. So I'm going to have it like a streaming cost. That's it. There will be a small cost every month, but I will go deep. I'll have go lives. I'll have groups where you guys can ask me all the questions that you want in particular times. And then I'm going to get real nitty gritty with some of the stuff. I will actually do the exercises with you. I will show you the everything, the stuff that I've learned, the stuff that I haven't, that didn't work for me, the things that I thought I needed to do on this journey and continue to share and bring things to you in a more detailed way. Like we're talking a 10 minute podcast, right? Which I never keep to 10 minutes. I'm looking at 17 minutes right now, but that's still not enough. Plus soul stuff. I am going to create some meditations that you can go through with me so that you can have these exact same amazing experiences in your prayer life. I do have a 40 day video prayer course That if you've never prayed before and you really don't have a prayer life going on, I would highly suggest you take that first. But that doesn't mean you can't learn more about the soul. So the membership is really going to be soul, mind, and body. And we're going to dive into each one of those components because they're all connected. This is the beauty when God enlightens you to the real fact of life, which is we are supposed to live it abundantly. And that means mind, body, and soul. But soul's got to come first, just like the two greatest commandments. Jesus is first. Okay. So keep your eye peeled for that. I'm going to outline some things and get some videos out there to uh, promote it. And then we're going to dive on in. Why not? No time like the present. I mean, you know, just because it's the fifth week of Lent doesn't mean you can't get into something new. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, I'll wait till the end of Lent. Well, why? Why? When people can dive in right now. I just need to put some thoughts and pen to paper or fingers to a keyboard. (laughs) That's usually the way I do it. 
and kind of, you know, sketch some things out. But it makes sense to me because people are asking me, you guys are coming to me. You're taking advantage of my one-on-one consultation offer that I have given freely to everyone. So if you want to take advantage of that, send me an email, Kendra at KendraVonEsh.com or go to my website and just fill out the form and we can have a consultation, which may be just what you need to get you on the right track. Okay, now we're looking at 20 minutes. So I am going to let you go. I want you to have this abundant life. I want you to realize that you are Abram turning into Abraham. And the thief is the one that destroys and slaughters and steals. But Jesus came to give us life so that we may live it abundantly. So let's do that together. Find something more with God today, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day.